the crosscut force is the best card force of all time. Classics are classics for a reason. In this case, the crosscut force was invented, or at least put in print, in 1925 by a man named Max Holden, and since then it's been being used to great success by magicians all around the world. Now listen, I hear you. I hear your concerns about the crosscut force. It just won't fool anybody. It just won't, uh, it, it, they'll, they'll catch on. It's too risky. They'll notice it. They're gonna know. Trust me, no they won't. Deck of cards. I want you to take this deck of cards and get used to how they feel in your hands, okay? You can uh, get used to how they look, get used to how they feel in your hands. You can look at them, shuffle them around if you want to. It's up to you. Just uh, make yourself one with the deck, all right? Are you counting the cards and making sure they're all there? I'm looking to see if there's duplicates hey, hey, of anything. Do what, you need to, do what you need to do. Make yourself you know, one with the deck. <laughs> there's 52 in here, I'm assuming. Yeah, you can count them if you want. Hey, I'm making myself one with the deck. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now set them right there. Now, I'm going to try to exercise my psychic abilities on you. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to make physical contact. Perfect. I've got it. But just to lock it in, ask you a few questions. Okay. Let's see if we do this. Mm hmm. What is your favorite season of the year? Spring. Spring. Mine too. Good answer. What did you have for breakfast this morning? A protein shake. A protein shake. <laughs> Get out of here. Greek yogurt. All right. That's all I need to know about this. I'll put that right there and it won't move. All right. Now, pick up the deck, if you would, please. And we're going to do sort of like a randomizer uh, thing here. Uh, start dealing cards face down or right there into a pile. All right. Okay. Now, you can deal bunches if you want to. You can uh, take cards from the middle, like a bunch of cards from the middle, or take from some bottom. You can even mix them around if you want to. Make them all random and mix them, like, in a way that I couldn't have predicted beforehand. As long as you're happy, I'm happy. Do I hold this deck? Yeah, you just do it until they're all gone. That's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Now square them all up. Okay. Now pick up the deck. Okay. In your hand. Perfect. Now cut about, hold them face down. And cut about half to the table right there. Okay. Now put the top half on, but like maybe at like a two o'clock angle. Two o'clock angle. That's amazing. Nobody's ever done it that good before. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. So look, check this out. You took the deck. You made yourself one with the deck. One with the deck. You even counted them. There's 52 cards. There could be, I don't know. But uh, you shuffled them around. You did that randomizer dealing and mixing procedure. There's no way I could have known anything about this. But look, you could have cut to the ace. You could have cut there, there, anywhere would have been a different card. All these cards could have been cut too. I'm waiting to read out loud what this says on the on the on the card, on this. You want me to read this? Read it out loud, yeah. You will cut to the nine of diamonds. Ah oh, man. You want to take a look? Hang on. <laughs> you wanna... We can see if there's any extra nines of diamonds in this deck. I looked through the deck. I don't think there is. I mean, you could anywhere. You shuffled it. I didn't. I and I never. I never touched anything. There's no freaking way. <laughs> what is that about? Okay, so let's talk about this. So this deck of cards that I was using is a marked deck, okay? So this particular deck is called the Speed Reader Deck by Garrett Thomas. A wonderful marked deck. Highly recommend it. 
So here's how you would do this routine. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple, but uh, I'll, I'll go through it just in case. And I want to talk about the subtlety I did with the crosscut force as well. Now, since this is a marked deck, you really can have the person shuffle as much as they want to, like she did in that video. And so when they put it down, all you do is read the back of the top card. In this case, it's the seven of clubs, and that'll be the card that you predict. But listen, don't make it obvious, okay? So uh, don't get in the habit of when they put it down, uh, looking at the deck for a minute and just being quiet, you know, like, okay, I got it. You don't want to do that. Instead, as they put it down, uh, say something and reach for the pen. And as you're writing this and talking to them, just casually glance down at the marking as you open the pen like this. Looks like you're looking at the pen, but really you're looking at the mark. So you just simply you write on this card, you will cut to the seven of clubs, okay? So, and you can have a lot of fun with it, uh, with your presentation, like asking them those uh, nonsense questions like I did. It doesn't matter. Just uh, get them involved in any way you can. It'll be a good moment and a good, uh, a good routine for you. So after you write that down, of course, you put it like by them and, you know, you don't want to be accused of switching the cards. So it's in their, uh, it's in their space the whole time, right? So now you're going to coach them through the classic deal and a mixed procedure by Ray Goulet. Okay, so they pick up the deck and it's important that this whole time that you don't touch the cards at all. Okay, so they pick up the deck and you say, look, I want you to, you know, completely randomize the deck in a way that I couldn't have predicted beforehand. So since we know the top card is a seven of clubs or a force card, you have them start dealing cards face down into a pile like this. And after like maybe two or three cards, you say, look, you can deal in bunches if you want to. You can deal, you can take cards from the bottom, take some from the middle. You can even mix them around a little bit, just, just so you know that they're completely random. And so they keep going. You say, keep doing that until there's no cards left, okay? So blah, blah, blah. And they do this, so the cards are in a mess. Now you ask them to square these up. Now, of course, we know the whole deck is mixed besides our card on the bottom, which we need, uh, which we need to be there on the bottom so we're golden. So when they square the deck up, uh, you will have them pick it up. And if they're on your right, you will have them cut some cards down like this uh, per the cross cut for us. They cut about half to the table right here. And you say, take the top half and put it at sort of a two o'clock angle like this. And so they do. And the reason for doing this is because if you're on this side, of course, it's easy for you to come over here and pick up that top half like this in middle fashion. If it was something like this, something crazy, you have to come over and do this like in their space and elbow them. But since they did it at a two o'clock angle on your right, it's very easy to come over here and pick them up just like this. Of course, if they were on your left side, you would have them do it at sort of a 10 o'clock angle, right? So they're over here and they cut like this, boom, they're here. And now they cut at the 10 o'clock angle. So again, it's easier for you to come over here like this and grab those cards with your left hand now. So you're like this. In any case, the bottom card of the upper half after the cross cut force is going to be, of course, the force card, right? So. Here's a nice embellishment or a nice convincer that I've added to the cross cut force that you can do. And remember, the cross cut force is all about your attitude and your casualness of uh, doing it. So, and of course, confidence is number one. Okay, so if you have to question yourself and, and if you act timid about it or like act shy in your voice, uh, it's going to come across as uh, disingenuous. Okay, so you want to uh, be assertive. Uh, uh, dominate and be confident about this force, okay? So, uh, but you want to also act very casual. So, uh, of course, the time delay is very important, too. So, just to recap everything that happened, yes, yeah, so you said, remember, you shuffle the cards. You know, you dealt them, you stopped whenever you wanted to, you mix them some more. Uh, I couldn't have controlled any of that, blah, 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 for the time delay, right? So, now, you come over here and you simply just pick these up and toss that card to the side, like it doesn't matter, okay? So, all you're doing here is simply picking up the cards, doing that, and uh, look how casual that is. Like, it doesn't even matter. And so you want to put less importance on this action and more importance on the convincer that's about to happen. Okay, so that's um, uh, very important. Okay, so you come over here like this. 
we put that there. Don't even say anything about it. Say, don't, don't even call attention to it. Say, we'll put that there. No, don't do that. Don't say anything about it. Just simply take it off without even mentioning it. Okay, so now for the convincer. To really sell that they could have cut anywhere, you prove it. Okay, so you're like this. Now, you could have cut to the jack. You could have cut to the seven. If you had cut deeper, you could have cut to the three. And notice what I'm doing here. I'm just lifting off packets like this and showing them cards they could have cut to. And that looks very convincing. And they'll be like, yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah, I could have cut anywhere. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, we'll do this again. They cut, they do their two o'clock angle, and you just casually do this. You could have cut to that. And so immediately after I draw that off, you could have cut to the five. You could have cut to the king. Had you cut deeper, you could have cut to the six. Boom, you could have had any one of these cards, but you cut to this card right here. So now all that's left is for you to hand them this card and ask them to read out loud what it says and they'll say you will cut to the seven of clubs and they're going to freak out. They're going to be like no way. There's no way that's possible. There's no freaking way as she said it and she was so convinced that she really cut to it and it was a free choice that she had to sit there and look through the other cards just to make sure just a, just a double check if I was you know pulling a fast one. I mean she was so convinced that it was a true and genuine thing that um, she didn't question the discrepancy of the force at all, which is uh, what you want to achieve with something like this. And that is my uh, thoughts and uh, what I wanted to share with the crosscut force with you today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Is there anything on those cards? No, you can. They're all just blank cards. If you had to guess, so this is like sort of an experiment, right? If you had to get, like, your wildest guess, how do you think this could have been done? If you had to guess. I I touched the card, so yeah. I have... I cut everything. Oh, yeah, you shuffled them. Multiple times. I even. moved them. Yeah. You dealt as ever many you wanted. Why'd you ask me the questions at the beginning? <clears throat> It was part of it, you know. I had, I had to I had to get inside your brain to see how you would do it. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. <laughs> I I have no idea. I have zero explanation for this. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> what you like to learn? Yeah.